So today, um, there are several speakers, um, some short speeches from, uh, from various people. The first person is Vicky Walsh. Vicky. I'm getting near. It's all good. How do we make this lower? I think it's going to be in front of the video now, isn't it? Not sure. Right, you tell me if you can hear me. Okay. Move this a bit closer as well. Can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, it's still sagging a bit. Is it go. good? Tena Koto Katoa. As Renee said, I'm Vicky Walsh. Oop, can't hear me? Is Renee gone? Oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, I'll try and hold this up. Can we just lift it up a little bit? That's it. Good. That's it. How's that? Yep, yeah. yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm trying to get really close. How's that? Yeah. That's good. Tēnā koto katoa. As Renee has said, I'm Vicky Walsh and I come here today from Tokamaru, a little village just out of Palmerston North. In 2011, I was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer and I was given 12 to 14 months to live. While my illness hasn't killed me yet, you can be guaranteed it will. You right? Yeah. Is that? Close to the microphone. Trying. <laughs> When I was 13, my brother and two of his friends were killed by a drunk driver. At 21, my father dropped dead very suddenly of a heart attack. And 18 months prior to my diagnosis, my mother died from ovarian cancer. So I know what it's like to lose people in a variety of different ways. And losing someone you love is never easy. Pro-euthanasia people tell me that if the end of life choice bill passes, it would be my decision as to whether I ended my life or not. I disagree. The right to die for some could become my obligation to. We, thank you. When Brittany Maynard and Lucretia Seals were advocating for physician-assisted dying, I started having thoughts about my own quality of life, specifically the burden both emotionally and financially I was having on my family and my loved ones. And I decided the most courageous option was to end my life. I planned it down to the last detail and it was a very real attempt although obviously not successful. No one, including me, realised that I was suffering from depression. And of course I was. Given the circumstances, of course I was. My life is challenging, and definitely not the life I had nine years ago. In fact, if you'd asked me nine years ago if I would have supported this bill, I'd probably have said yes. But you know what? Over time I've learnt to adjust and to get pleasure out of my new life. Whoever knew my experiences would provide opportunities to meet so many incredible people and to connect with people from all around the world. Heck, nine years ago, who would have believed I'd be a grandmother to five? I know there are people that, who'd say that I'm not suffering and that there's no decline in my capability, and that's just the whole point, isn't it? No one can know what's going on else in someone else's head and what's going on in their home. For me personally, I lost a lot of things. And hey, maybe things that never really mattered in the first place. But these were things that I felt defined me and things that the average person takes for granted. Things that, that provide you with autonomy, such as my job, my driver's license, but the most difficult thing for me to lose was my independence. Some of the most simplest things I took for granted were no longer mine. It's taken a lot of effort for me to be here today, and this effort will have a physical impact, not just on me, but for those that care about me. But I'm here as a courageous, although somewhat an emotional advocate for the hundreds of people who cannot be here today. I've had the privilege of speaking to many people who are dying, and not once has anyone ever told me they want to die. They say things like, I'm scared, I'm lonely, I am frightened, and most specifically, I do not want to be a burden. The day a terminally ill woman told me that she was an inconvenient responsibility to her family, a little piece of my heart broke. I'm scared of what this bill could mean for me, and I have real fears that adequate safeguards are not in place and that I can't be protected against subliminal pressures. 
Again, my name is Vicky Walsh and I deserve the right to live with dignity yeah. and without fear. Thank you.